Hi, Steffen here from Programming X. In today's video, I want to talk about how and why to avoid null references in simple cases. You should know the following concept for today's video. These are lists, the null reference itself, the toString method, and we will use it for each loop. I want to start with an example that brings across one point. Use empty strings instead of null. In this example, we have a product class that contains a name and a price in cents. That means a product price, basically. Then we have an order that contains a list of products and a message to the fulfillment team. Then we have a constructor, which basically takes the message to the fulfillment team and a list of products. Then we have a second constructor that just takes the list of products, making the message to the team optional. And we have a toString method, which shows the ordered products, just lists them. And if the message to the team is available and it's not empty, then the message to the team is also listed. As we can already see, we've got a kind of ugly double checking here, where we check wh whether the message to team is null or not, and whether it's empty or not. Then we have a main method. In the main method, we create two products. Then we create an order without an optional message to the team and with an optional message to the team. And we print out both orders on the screen. The message to team is automatically initialized. We could also write equals null explicitly, or we can leave it out, it's, it's the same. So we kind of need this null for the null check down here. So I, I would write it explicitly, but if we don't, it doesn't matter either. So let's look at the printout. Our printout um, shows here, shows our first order. Order products are camera and microphone, and in the second order we see our order products, camera, microphone, as well as the message to the team. Okay, now let's change one thing. Let's change our null to an empty string. If we do this, we can leave out the null check down here, and we only have a single check left where we just look if the message is empty or not. This trims the code a little bit and makes it a little bit cleaner. So, do you want to see another example? If yes, please hit the like button. Ooh, very well. So, let's take a look at another example. If you read an empty file, should a method that reads all lines from a file. Should this rather return null, or should this method rather return an empty collection? What do you think is the better way? Well, I think we should return empty collections instead of null. So let's take a look why. So we have an example with a null value here. We have implemented a read lines method. How it is implemented is, is not so important. The question is, should it return null or should it return an empty collection if the file is empty? Well, let's take a look at the usage of the method. We call the read lines method here and obtain a collection of strings with the lines in the file. Well, if there are no lines and the read lines method returns null, we would obviously have to check if lines is null, so we don't run into the for each loop. But what do we do if read lines actually returns some lines from the file? Then we still have to do the null check because it could be possible that the file is empty and lines is null. And only after the null check we are able to use the for each loop to print out the file. Let's take a look at uh, returning an empty list instead. Well, if we return an empty list, if the file is empty, then we receive an empty collection here and we can use our for each loop directly because if lines is empty, we simply wouldn't step into the for each loop so nothing happens. And that's exactly the behavior we want. 
if lines contain some lines from the file, then we will step into the for each loop and print out the lines we read. So a short recap, we should use empty strings instead of null, that saves us some null checks basically, and also use empty collections instead of null. This is the case that happens rather often that you use a method that returns a collection and then you use it for each loop to iterate over the collection. And if you don't make sure that you do not return null, then you always have to do a null check instead of using a for loop directly. If you have to return null, this can also be the case, then you should definitely document that in your Java documentation. Or even better, use the optional type. In the next video, we will take a short look at the optional type and we will also look at how to avoid the usage of null in harder cases and not in such simple cases as we did now. If you like my video, please subscribe to the channel. You can do this here and please like our video and spread the word so these videos reach more viewers. Thank you.